The workers work. The drinkers drink. The dancers dance. And the innkeepers keep. The clock chimes. The children play. The moon is on its way. Welcome to Clock Town. Good evening. This weekend marks the beginning of the annual Clock Town Clock Festival. Yes, it's that time of year again where we can all gather around as a community, around the giant clock in the centre of our town, and dance and sing until morning, praising it and praying that it will never stop ticking. For the fear of what will happen if it stops ticking is something that keeps us all awake in the frolls of the evening. Every night, cushioned beneath our blankets, staring up at the ceiling, begging that constant, rumbling tick-tock to continue going. For even though that dreadful sound keeps us awake at night, its absence fills us with such a dread that we dare not speak of it. Anjou of the Stockpot Inn warns that all travellers should be aware that rooms are sold out right now, which means that no outsiders are allowed to the Clock Town Clock Festival. Any outsiders witnessed should be considered vagrants who do not have a room at the inn nor a residence within Clock Town and should be expelled from our town. We will not allow our town to have a vagrancy problem, Mayor Dotor said in a press statement given earlier today. He elaborated that the Clock Town Clock Festival has to happen this weekend. If it does not happen this weekend, then time will no longer flow, and if time no longer flows, then how on earth will we know what time it is? How will we know when to go to bed? When will we know when to wake in the morning? In fact, how will we know when the seasons pass? There is no way of knowing, not without the clock. So we must give our thanks, worship, and sacrifice to the clock. Without the clock, time is may go backwards. The press statement was intended to continue, but it was disbanded when the postman walked up to the front of the crowd and began rambling how time would also stop if the post didn't arrive on time. If the post doesn't arrive in the morning, then how can you truly say the morning has begun? Nobody paid attention to him because he is a work-obsessed lunatic. This just in. The doors to the forbidden clock tower have opened. Those giant, inviting, wooden doors creaked open for the first time in clock tower history. There have been stories, listeners, about people who have got through those doors and they came back broken men, rambling about a secret underground forest. But no, witnesses do report that the doors did open today, and out came a horrible, gnarly, wooden monstrosity in a green cap. Green and brown don't go together? Oh my goodness, the reports are so damning and horrifying. Not only was there this empty, wicked beast. But there was something else lurking in the darkness. Witnesses report it as a being, a malevolent, twisted abomination with a thousand faces. 
and all but two of their eyes were so cold and hollow but the two eyes that had life my god those eyes my god though I would prefer it if those doors remained closed for the rest of time if you will forgive the pun we will give more on this story if it develops in other and far less horrifying news Madame Aroma the mayor's wife and the Clock Town Clock Festival event coordinator has announced our entertainment for this year. Starting the festival, we will have a live performance from the Indiegogos, a group of fishmen who happen to play instruments. When asked about this particular choice, Madame Aroma simply said, well, those people playing instruments. It's amusing, yes? And yes, it is amusing. Fish don't have fingers. They can't play the bass. How amusing. To finish off the evening, we'll have a live performance from the Gorman Troop. The Gorman Troop, led by the ugly and disgusting brother of the ugly and disgusting Gorman brothers who run the Milk Ranch out of town. The inferior Milk Ranch out of town. The Gorman troop, led by the only Gorman wise enough to get out of that dead game, are a group of travellers who happen to have circus-like tendencies. Although I personally believe that they should be counted among the vagrants, they are allowed, in fact, to perform this weekend, and we should expect them, and ignore them. Ignore them like, well, like that one guy. We don't talk about that one guy. You know that guy. That guy who sits on the edge of town and plays with the children. That guy who dresses up like a fairy. We don't talk about that guy. Oh my goodness, r listeners. I've been here talking about the splendors that we're about to witness this weekend from the Clock Town Clock Festival. And I hadn't even noticed this beautiful, wonderful letter on my desk. Ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. It seems that love is blooming in the air. Yes! Anju, the innkeeper at the Stockpot Inn, and Carfe, the son of the mayor and Madame Aroma, will be married right after the festival. So we can enjoy an evening of dancing around the clock and then gather together to witness two young budding lovers joining hands and joining their lives. Personally, I'm thrilled. I think it will be a wonderful event for the entire town that we'll be able to tell our children we were there when love bloomed and time flowed. Yes, this is a wonderful time to be alive. Hmm, let's see what other news we might have lying around here. Oh. Listeners, it seems that the lights above the Romani Ranch have in fact returned. Um, previous listeners may remember that above the Romani Ranch there were several lights floating through the sky, uh, followed by horrible, loud, annoying sounds which um, witnesses described to be cows screaming for their lives. We went to talk to the Romani sisters. Unfortunately, Crimea, the older sister, was unavailable, so we spoke to her little sister, who said, quote, Romani was practicing for tonight. Tonight. They are coming. They. They come at night 
every year when the carnival gets closer. They come riding in a bright shining ball and many of them come down to the barn. My older sister won't believe me, but Romani must protect the cows. And I, and I'm sure the rest of Clocktown, wish you luck, Romani. Though we may not share your deluded belief that little men on shining balls of light are taking the cows away, we can understand that the cows are going missing. So whether it be from giant beast of Termina Bay, or whether it be them wandering off into the fields, I can say that we wish you luck, little Romani, that you'll hold it together, little Romani, that you'll be able to bear the strain and pain of running the farm, little Romani, that you'll be able to forget the passing of your parents and the pain it inflicted on you and your sister. We hope that you will be able to bear the weight, to maintain the weight until the cows come home. And now, the weather. Link, here come to town. Ladies and gentlemen, during the break I was contacted by Professor Shikashi. He tells me that the horrible deformed gnarled wood boy had somehow broken into his observatory and by somehow we mean use the secret path that he had installed for children. Take that as you may, the professor contacted me and said that he has confirmed the moon is falling. Yes, I know, Clocktown. The mere concept of the moon coming down and crushing us all fills me with existential dread. But we must stay strong. The Clocktown Clock Festival is this weekend, and we must continue to prepare for the Clocktown Clock Festival festival, even in the face of Armageddon. The festival must continue. But I did take a look out at the night sky, and I looked up at the moon's angry, evil face. And yes, it does appear to be closer than any of us could have possibly expected or anticipated. When I was watching, a small tear emitted from its evil eye and rocketed towards the planet. I saw it crash just outside of town. I have not the courage to investigate myself and I don't think any of the interns will be able to get there fast enough to spread the news, but the moon is in fact coming towards us at an alarming rate and it's crying. Perhaps the idea that we will be crushed by it 
is just as scary to it coming towards us, seeing this huge mass that is our planet, and knowing it can't stop. Moon, if there is a way to stop this, I really wish we could. Because we do not wish to be crushed and you do not wish to be crushed. So, Clocktown, I leave you with this warning. Look up to the night sky. Look up and pray. Pray for Clocktown and pray that time will march forward. Good night, Clocktown. Good night. Welcome to Clocktown is a parody of Welcome to Night Vale by Commonplace Books and The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. All music from Welcome to Clocktown is from Majora's Mask soundtrack by Koji Kondo. The voice of Clocktown is Craig Bayfield. This episode's weather was The Legend of Zelda by The Rabbit Joint. Welcome to Clocktown was brought to you by Purple Tree and Pocket Parrot Studios. For more of their work, check out morphe.thewebcomic.com. That's M-O-R-P-H-E. Today's proverb, tingle, tingle, kulumpa. These are magic words Tingle created himself. Don't steal them.